From 2006 to 2007, there was a show that aired on the Fuse Network that was so outside the norm of what was airing on TV at the time that it had to be seen to be believed. This show had one of the most blush-inducing names you will ever say out loud, Pants Off, Dance Off. When all you needed was a show where the viewer could shut their brain off and just absorb a meaningless half hour of silly entertaining television, there really is nothing better than this show. The plot was simple, the production values were minimal, but it was a show that certainly had its place in history. The basic plot to Pants Off Dance Off was unbelievably simple. Each episode involved regular everyday people undressing to pop music. That's it. The show debuted on the then recently relaunched Fuse Network in April of 2006. Fuse, which was previously known as Much Music USA, focused on music-oriented TV very much in the style of old-school MTV, but with a more independent twist. I tell my team, always keep looking for smart done stupid or stupid done smart. Usually you'll get something distinctive and interesting out of that combination. This was a quote by Alex Campbell, then vice president and former VH1 executive, looking for creative new programming ideas. Pants Off Dance Off was conceptualized by Tad Lowe. Lowe, who Entertainment Weekly listed as one of the most creative people in entertainment, had previously co-created the wildly successful pop-up video on VH1, which ran for eight total seasons, six from 1996 to 2002, and then two more from 2011 to 2012. Meanwhile, by the mid-2000s, there was no shortage of competition-based reality shows. In 2005, one of the most popular shows of the genre, So You Think You Can Dance, had debuted and was doing quite well as a dance competition program. Following the cancellation of the first iteration of pop-up video, Lowe went on to create Pants Off Dance Off as another fun series meant for young adult audiences. The show would incorporate the idea of competitive dancing and then take it to a whole, not quite safe for work level by adding the element of striptease. Each contestant, referred to as pantsers, would dance to their favorite music while the screen turns into a wild, colorful mass of content. The contestant would talk about themselves and answer questions in a small box in the corner, the host would add commentary, and there was non-stop motion in the background. Visually, the show was complete chaos. It was so colorful and vibrant that it would almost be impossible to focus on the pantsers at times. Winners were determined by a website system connected to the show. Home viewers would be able to vote for contestants in various categories. They would be judged for their dance skills and stage presence, as well as goofier categories such as if they were the funniest or scariest performer. The winner would walk away with $200, while everyone else just got to have fun in a safe environment undressing on national television. Pants Off Dance Off lasted for three seasons, featuring a different host for each one. Season 1 was co-hosted by MySpace-centric superstar Tila Tequila, who was at the absolute height of her popularity at the time. Season 2 was hosted by the always amazing Full House star Jody Sweeten, and Season 3 was hosted by singer Willa Ford. Contestants were searched for using flyers distributed at concerts, as well as ads placed on Craigslist, MSN, and Yahoo. People of all shapes, sizes, backgrounds, and experiences would come in and dance with the intent on getting a few bucks, and more importantly, to enjoy the experience. For all intents and purposes, Pants Off Dance Off was pretty far ahead of its time, as there really hadn't been any other show so blatant in its objectification of both men and women. This series was certainly not in the same family-friendly realm as So You Think You Can Dance, and may have caught mainstream audiences off guard who might not have been quite ready for a show of nothing but televised strip teasing. Obviously, a show of this nature was going to receive a great deal of backlash. Some criticized the show for its main plot device of simply objectifying women, while others questioned its tastelessness and vulgarity, and why a show of this nature was even allowed to air on television in the first place. Then you had a whole other group of critics who were upset that the nudity was censored and no uncensored versions were made available. Even with its fair share of controversy, or maybe even because of it, 
Pants Off Dance Off quickly became Fuse's most watched show and gave the network a boost in popularity with ratings increases of 91% in some time slots. In the years that followed, the channel aired many live concerts from major artists including Fall Out Boy, John Mayer, and Drake, as well as the rights to air the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Although the show did well in its three seasons, it did not last past 2007. At one time, the show enjoyed a popular afterlife on YouTube. However, as time has gone on, many of these clips have disappeared, either through removal by the uploader or by YouTube due to its sexual content. Either way, this is a show that seems to be fading quickly from memory, for better or worse. Pants Off Dance Off was fun for what it was. Sure, it was short-lived, but it still gave viable opportunities to average men and women who truly wanted to show off what the good lord gave them and have a fun time performing a striptease on national TV for a few minutes of fame and a couple of Benjamins. No harm in any of that.